Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I examine whether it's possible to send the Orion spacecraft with a lunar lander on SLS. Now the lunar landers seem to be configured to launch on their own and the Orion spacecraft would meet up with them at the lunar gateway or something like that and then the crew would transfer over and then they would land. But the question is whether SLS can launch both at the same time because the lunar landers seem configured whether it's the D Dynetics one or this one of course Starship is a whole other thing but Dynetics or this one are meant to launch either on Vulcan or New Glenn which of course they have less capacity than SLS the Orion spacecraft does not take up all of SLS's capacity however if you combine the two it's a little bit over as uh, Orion spacecraft is 22-ish uh, tons a little bit more than that depending on uh, how much fuel you give the service module. And then the lander itself is also 22 tons, 23 tons-ish. Uh, so it adds up to basically the same exact thing as the Saturn V capacity to the moon, uh, 45 to 48 tons. And the rated uh, capacity of SLS Block 1B is 38 tons to the moon last time I checked, but they might have updated that. So it's tight. Now there's another thing, uh, the service module for Orion is not really designed for stuff. Uh, it's not like the Apollo command module, it can't get itself and the lander into, or into a tight orbit around the moon. It could probably get itself and the lunar lander into a loose orbit around the moon. And actually the lunar landers, both the Dynetics one and this one, the ILV I'll call it, this is the Blue Origin National Team one, uh, they seem to have a lot more fuel than they need, strictly speaking, in order to just land on the moon and get back to low lunar orbit, uh, assuming it's just low lunar orbit. They seem to have enough to get to a high orbit, like I guess where Gateway is placed. But that means that the Orion uh, service module doesn't necessarily need to get everything into a low orbit, but how low does it need to go is, is the question in this case, you know. So it's, it's a bit of a puzzle. I'm going to try the ILV first because it's simpler uh, to mount on. The Dynetics one has those drop tanks, and I figured out a way to place the Dynetics Lunar Lander on here with the drop tanks, and actually the height of this inner stage area that the lander is in is smaller for the Dynetics one than it is for this, so there is that going for it. But yeah, anyway, we'll package this up and let's see if we can make it work. I don't know, and that's why I'm testing it. Okay, unfortunately I don't have a whole lot of structure at pad 39B right now, but here we are with the rocket. A little bit higher off than I thought it ought to be, but SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. We are lined up with the moon. And launch. Well, we have a roll program. <laughs> I don't know how far we have to toss it up for the upper stage to do the orbit completion. We'll have to see. This is not exactly a mass that I've tossed up with SLS before. It's a little bit different. I think we'll probably be ditching the launch escape system before we ditch the core. I forget how long it carries that. But under our current circumstances, I don't want to carry it any longer than I have to. There's also the panels around the service module, but those I'll carry until we light the upper stage. Okay, off. Well, I can't say that the tra trajectory was perfect. Definitely not. It's not feeling that way. Oh, I was supposed to dump the launch escape system. Shoot. Off we go. Okay, we're getting done with the core stage here. Let's see if that decoupling works right. That always has problems. Alright. Well, that part always explodes anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, I guess that's the engines. Okay. And 
nozzle extension. Okay, good times. Those are the service module plates. So they can go. If they can go. <laughs> they say, oh, you release them now. Well, if they go. Ooh, that's bad. Be careful. Oh, those doubles. It's weird. So we were carrying a little bit of extra mass because somehow there were doubles. Don't do that, please. Don't do that. <laughs> well, I'll see what happens. I see. It's, it's very nicely done, though. Uh, it's got the interior texture as well. Appreciate the work there. So now, what combination of things will actually give me a proper read on the Delta V? Okay, it looks like this. Well, that's not quite enough, but we'll see. Okay, we're about to make orbit, but we're a little bit shy on the amount that we need for transfer, and obviously mistakes were made here. So I'm going to try to relaunch a little bit more efficiently, and maybe that'll help, because we're close enough. We're close enough that it might be doable if it's a little bit more accurate. We need about 200 more. We probably won't get all 200, but we'll have to see. Uh, certainly if this, I don't know if this hanging out has any difference, makes any difference, but we did double up these fairings for some reason. I didn't intend to, but somehow that happened. And the trajectory could do with some work now that I've gotten a little bit of practice. Alright, so let's try again. Okay, I hope you like launches, because here we go again. Throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. I tweaked a few other things, like how much RCS there is on the EUS stage. And um, I think the masses of the panels here I set a little bit lower, the fairings on the inner stage. Altogether, we're 2,700 tons on the pad, so just for reference. We're going steeper with the SRBs this time. Okay, going through the speed of sound here. Okay, getting ready for booster SEP in six seconds. And separation. I suppose we can go with the launch escape system separation to save mass. Okay, so hopefully this is going to be a little bit better. It just needs to be 200 meters per second better, but I don't think it's going to be that much better. We will see. Okay, well our, our apoapsis is not as high, so hopefully that will be better. And this stage is running out. Separation. And ignition. <laughs> oh, that sounded wonderful. Uh, anyway, uh, nozzles out. Otherwise, things seem to be fine. And let's tr uh, try out the panels again. Well, they separated nicely this time because there weren't two of them clipped into each bit. Good times. Okay, uh, that's pretty good. 252 by 185, and it says we have 3,160 something, 69 left. Uh, so that should be okay. Let's see. I didn't think it'd turn out quite that well, but it's very tight anyway. I think that's an okay approach time. Um, we probably will need a mid-course adjustment to pull that up a little bit, but we do have enough delta V. Might as well get the solar panels out. No, I remember I had to extend panel twice here. 
It's one of those weird things. Okay, that start burn is obviously not right. Eh, that has to do with Case Bean or Stellar stuff. We need basically the entire stage. Oh, it's not telling me the right burn time either. Uh, well, we'll be fine. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start turning to the node. And we should take a look at how much RCS fuel we really need for this. One thing I need to do is create surface bases for the moon. That is something that we don't really have a whole lot of information on right now, I don't think. Alright, we'll see whether the Delta V reading down there had been correct. Right now it's not showing anything, which is always worrisome. Okay, ignition. I don't know exactly how long this is going to take. Oh, it says start burn in 8. <laughs> um, okay, well, maybe that was about right after all. It says burn time 10 minutes, so it would have been pretty close. Okay, killing rotation. Keeping an eye on this. Oh, it went out early. So I guess because of the length of the burn, it didn't quite make it. Yeah, it didn't quite make it. Well, I'm gonna let it expend the RCS. We're gonna need to keep a little bit of RCS just to hold this stage steady while the Orion comes around to dock. I hope the docking ports work. I've decided to use um, uh, CX NASA docking systems. This one active, the other one on the lander passive. Uh, I haven't used the CX Aerospace ones in a long time. I think that uh, I think it's from CX Aerospace, given that it says CX. Okay, so I'll reserve the rest for just keeping the stage steady while we handle our other business. Let me uh, just send some fairings. Okay, well this is all very complicated. <laughs> Uh, what, we'll, what we'll do is we'll separate the top node, which should jettison this bit here, uh, along with the lander, and then the lander, not the lander, the Orion, and then the Orion will flip around and then decouple that, so it'll go off in the opposite direction. So, um, hmm. Let's just uh, preactivate Orion's RCS. Okay, uh, decouple top node, okay, and Orion's RCS forward, oop, uh, fuel is not locked, RCS is enabled, that seems to be not very correct on the RCS ISP though, hmm. Oh, well it's turning. What? Oh, maybe the RCS doesn't have the effect visible, I think. Um, let's see, is it using MMHM on 3? Or, don't tell me there's a reaction wheel somewhere in here. Wait, there's a reaction wheel in the pot. Oh, I've got to re remove that. Okay, so note to future self, I'm going to have to fix the RCS. I didn't realize that was... Uh, I didn't write the configurations for this SLS. The, uh, it was part of the original mod, and this might be fixed in more recent versions. It is like from 1.3.1 .1 that I have. So, fix uh, Orion RCS. I thought I had used it before. So that is weird. Okay, but, you know, I often forget about things. So, let's make sure we're controlling from the docking port. And targeting that docking port. Getting rid of this. Um, the RCS fuel issue and the reaction wheel will have some effect on our fuel usage, but hopefully not too much. I wonder why there's these decouples here, but Jettison? Decouple? Decouple? Okay, one of them works. Hopefully the engine's engine, that engine at least works, but we'll deal with that 
Oh, docking is going to be a little bit hard, huh? Hmm. Okay. As it so happens, this is going to kill rotation. And uh, the SLS is going to have to do the docking. Because that can't translate forward accurately enough. This is going to have to use the RCS that at least I know works because I made it uh, on here. Good thing the landers are definitely remote controllable as well. Now I don't know about boil off on this stage. Oh, I didn't put MLI. Um, we'll just turn away from it for the transit. I want to pretend it doesn't have boil off for the purposes of our experiment. I don't know what kind of insulation it actually has and how much boil off it would actually have, but presumably for its intended to send it to the moon with its fuel intact, right? It's at least for the initial trips, it's probably the case that they're not, uh, they're going to have it actively cooled and it's not supposed to lose any fuel because there's not going to be facilities on the moon to refuel it anyway. Okay, we have docked successfully. And I'm going to decouple. There's a tiny little decoupler at the top of this. Decouple. Okay. And actually, this can back away. Well, uh, it doesn't have any independent electric charge. No, I, I should fix that too. Okay, so. Nope, this way. I guess we might as well deploy the legs while we're at it. It doesn't really matter whether we do it now or later. It just makes it look more landery. Okay, uh, it's a judgment call whether we actually use this engine to do corrections or these engines. Uh, yep, but let me plot a correction. 48 tons actually, more than I thought. And that probably explains why the stage over here couldn't manage it. So tighter than I expected. It's probably not doable for it to transfer us directly. Quite a bit short. So anyway, let me quickly do a correction maneuver. Okay, the plot is 55.6, but the sooner we do it, the better. I'm not going to take advantage of the reaction wheels here, so I'm going to just turn them off. And instead, uh, the pod RCS is only for re-entry. Um, and so I'll use the RCS on this side. So we'll just go like that. I think I probably packed more than enough. The Dynetics Lander is actually heavier, and I think I might underfuel the drop tanks for that in order to compensate. All right, that's a good periapsis, but I want a mid course adjustment in order to. Just get it equatorial. Uh, it's not actually going to be equatorial because they want to hit the poles and all, but I'm not doing that. So we're going to keep it simple for this uh, basic test here, and then we can complicate matters later. Okay, and that might be an RCS only correction, but I'm going to go to a tracking station at Time Warp so that we don't have to worry about the boil off, hopefully, and then we'll work from there. Okay, we've completed the correction burn here, and so that's our path on approach to the moon, and so we can proceed on to the moon. We did the correction with the RCS, so and that's not entirely efficient because the RCS actually blows at an angle to avoid hitting stuff, uh, but yeah, it works out. Actually, we're carrying a lot more RCS fuel on this stage than we need. We'll probably uh, use it to top off this and maybe... Uh, send some over to the service module and they would have managed where they would need to do the burns with ahead of time anyway. We want to optimize as much as possible. So on to the moon. Okay folks, we are approaching the moon here. We are within one hour of periapsis and yep, we will proceed from here. There will be some boil off and we will initially use the service module engine for capture. It's tough though. Uh, we probably need to reserve basically 1500 units of MMH kind of thing 
for return, so th about there-ish is what we need to reserve. Okay, ignition. And this may take a while. The stage time is very long. I probably should have started earlier even. Okay, we have a capture. We'll see how low it can go. Okay. I think we'll keep the periapsis to 60 and I don't want to pitch anymore. So if we want to do any more, we'll have to come around. I want to review how much Delta V this stage actually has in the VAB. And because right now, you know, we'll need quite a bit to land from here. We have to slow down all of the surface velocity, which is about 500 more than usual for uh, lunar landing right now. So let me pop into, uh, and we could use a little bit more of this fuel. It's got more than it needs to, uh, to return, especially since we're in a loose orbit like this. Uh, we could review, um, well, the problem is our, our orbit... It's sort of more tilted towards going out to like interplanetary space than going back to Earth. Okay, so we need at least 568 with the Orion service module in order to get back home. So we'll take a look at that in the VAB. So okay, uh, 568 minimum. Now that's pretty tight though. It looks like somewhere between this level and this level so 15 1500 ish is a good good number to go with on what we want to reserve in that stage i think well see now here we have our complication because this has the landing legs but 2384 meters per second doesn't seem like enough if we had the landing legs on here we'd be much better off because this is more than enough to get back to the orion spacecraft and this could just slow us down and this do final touchdown. You've seen this sort of pattern from me before. Uh, this would uh, do the final touchdown and then we could go back. But no, the landing legs have to be on here. So that is interesting. We could send some of this fuel out. Let's see, let's say we uh, completely drain this fuel and rely on the RCS from this stage. That's a little bit better off. So maybe this has got a lot of RCS thrusters on it anyway. So we probably don't need to worry about the RCS on this stage. We could just empty it. And then I think that'll be better. Okay, so that's going to be our strategy. We probably didn't need that much food, water, and oxygen either. Uh, this is like one month's supply for four people. We're only sending two down. And we could probably have done with like a week for them or something like that. So yeah, we overdid it on that as well. And these numbers look uh, even better than before. But okay, let's proceed and see what we can do. Okay, so we'll use a little bit more of the service module fuel here to get a little bit lower. Uh... Wow, um, something, it's all gone dark. What? It should be daylight here, but it's dark. Well, now the textures are doing something even more special than usual. That's wonderful. <laughs> the moon's supposed to be there. It's supposed to be daylight right here. That's gonna make it a little bit hard to land. Okay, well, we're close enough to retrograde. Let's go retrograde. Oh, uh, oh, well, I was there for a second, but it decided to give up on me. And ignition. Okay, and there's a little bit of imbalance between MMH and Mon 3 there, but we'll take that. That'll have to do. So, first of all, I'm going to use this fuel to top this off. And then I'll, I guess we'll just empty the rest into here. We'll do a little bit more slowing down. We'll get ourselves into a nice four hour orbit. I think that's good. 
Okay, well, that's going to be complicated. Let's move some peoples over. I'll have Valentina do the landing with Bob. What? Come on. Transfer. Oh, there. Uh, Jim and Bill's portraits have gotten a little bit messed up. Okay, I'm going to restart the game because I don't know what happened to the moon and I would like it back so that I can land on it. Okay, well, we have the moon back for now. I think uh, we will separate and then we'll have to go around for the landing, of course. There'll be some boil off. Hopefully it won't be too detrimental. Of course, the RCS isn't working on here. I probably should have fixed that before this bit, but that would have taken some time. So this will have to do the docking, but it has more fuel anyway. Okay, well, let's get ourselves on a sort of landing path. That should be a very small RCS burn. Okay, now we're definitely intersecting the ground. And we have the suicide burn countdown, though it's not counting right now. Okay, um, let's ready the engines. Okay, that's done. And we'll have to get ready to abort if necessary. That'll be a thing. We're coming in pretty sharply here. Which might be good for the suicide burn countdown. Maybe this has the burn time. Uh, I'm guessing that's not right. Hopefully. <laughs> that would be very, very long if that's correct. I guess it does have multiple ignitions. Maybe we can... Get an updated number somehow. Okay. Okay, three minutes. All right, I'll take that. Okay, well, let's try again. 30 seconds. Okay, we'll wait a little bit. And ignition. Uh, I might have been wrong about that. It's gone negative on me. We'll see. Seems manageable, maybe. Now this is totally... Well, it's got like nine minutes there. That's probably right. The Delta V is wrong, though. I didn't put the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the ladder. Well, anyway, we are testing other things. The ladder is a trivial mass in this case. So I'm surprised. Did I set them to 40 kilonewtons? I suppose so. They're 40 kilonewtons, 452.8 seconds ISP right now. Yep, I have no idea how this is going to go, but at least we're decelerating, you know. trying to manage that suicide burn countdown with the pitch a little bit. But I don't know how much I should do that. Now well, let's get above ground level here. And I think I want to manage that suicide burn countdown a little bit more vigorously now. Yeah, I probably should have pitched up more earlier rather than trying to do this. But I think we're still technically safe. Switching to SAS. And throttling down a bit. We're really close on the fuel.
Okay. Here we go. Oh, uh, let's slip to the other side. Oh, oh, okay, shut down, shut down. All right, all right, RCS off. Okay, well, barely made it. <laughs> so we've done that part. Okay. Um, so now we have to try and rendezvous because uh, we don't have any ladder, so we're going to forego the flag thing. Um, set Orion as a target. And yeah, we'll just go up and get into a low orbit first and then try to rendezvous with it. Um, so we have to make sure that we're going to be going clockwise, so 270. And one thing that could be helpful is if we get the rendezvous window open, I would like a heading to target actually. Okay, 246.9. All right, uh, let's just shut these down. And RCS on now, and stage. Please peek okay. All right, off we go. Oh great, our target is lost though, but I already registered which direction we're supposed to go in. Now this is basically an AJ-10-190. So the same as the Orion service module engine. So let's target that again. A nice 60 kilometer circular orbit would be good. I'm gonna go ahead and roll for electric charge. Okay, we're on inclination now. Could move that plume a little bit lower, looks like. And I want the time to apoapsis to tick down at this point, I think. Okay, looking good so far. We're trying to get into a nice circular orbit at 60 kilometers or so. And then we'll work on the rendezvous from there. Our food, water, and oxygen situation should be fine. We've got this huge solar panel on one side, so that should be fine too. It's all about Delta V. Okay, and shut down. Uh, okay, well, 70 by 47. I let it go a little bit. RCS off for now. We are recharging. And now let's set up a rendezvous with our target. So we are here. It's over there, but it's going to have to come all the way around. So there we have an intersect point. It'll take 300 to do the burn at uh, 3 hours and 49 minutes. And then we'll have to do another 171 when we uh, get to it in 7 hours and 49 minutes. That seems reasonable and doable. This delta V is not correct. Uh, this 2,700. I don't know how it's getting that. I would tend to trust the stock number more here right now. We just by common sense. Oh, it's because uh, for some reason I've got a decoupler on here. I should. Uh, well, I guess I can't disable it right now. Yeah, there's no point for that to decouple. It's not going to do anything useful. So I guess that's why it's confused me if I add... Okay, now it's giving a number that makes sense. Though the stage time is ridiculous. Okay, about 900. So we, we probably have enough. 
And that's why I wanted to lighten up the descent stage. We could probably underfuel this and it would have been easier for the descent stage and it would have been would not have been so close on our um landing. You know, the landing was really dicey. But if this was lighter and we dumped some of the fuel from here instead of carrying all of it, it'd be better off for the lander. It'd also be better off for SLS Block 1B. It would have gotten us closer to the moon and everything. Okay, node. RCS on. And we should be able to burn now. Okay, and fine-tuning. Okay, let's go meet up with Orion. Here we go. It shouldn't take too long to do the rendezvous burn, because we're at the bottom of this stage. It's got a pretty high thrust weight ratio now. Okay, target, negative relative velocity. It's like the pod is hiding behind the solar panel or something, but we can see the top of its head. Okay, and ignition. Okay, that's a good initial burn. We'll get closer, and then we'll do the next bit. Where is it? There it is. Now, technically, we could transfer the remaining fuel in this over to Orion, but we won't do that. We'll see whether my estimate was correct of how much I reserved in it. Okay, and then, well, I guess there isn't too much spare in here. 280. We can make a note of that for later. Okay, and on the Orion side... Oh, why does it have those... On? Oh, it's probably that that uh, RCS glitch where if you switch vessels it starts pretending it's firing the R it's not actually firing that RCS at all and it's still using its reaction wheel well we're gonna have it reaction wheel I'm gonna have to fix this pod for it to be a more legitimate thing Ah, uh, well but you know we'll see what we can see out of it uh, arrow cap Oh, the air cap's sort of buried in. That's another problem. We've got a few problems in here. I probably won't bring it back on this time so that we can resolve some of the problems. I, I wonder if I put the parachutes. Uh, we got the air cap. Is the parachutes? Yeah, the parachutes are there. But they're tucked in to the pod for some reason that I don't understand. So many problems. Still a nearly 5 ton pod here and not that much fuel remaining. So it's not light. It's fairly small though, and you can see that when it's uh, right up with Orion. Yeah, a little bit dark, but we are approaching. Uh, not quite there. Oh, do I have to rotate or something? I guess these are rotation specific kind of things. Okay, uh, so still kill rotation, please. Okay, and we'll transfer the Kerbals. Okay, again, not transferring fuel. We will undock. Lander will back away safely. Oops. Of course, they were able to give commands to the lunar module as well. Okay, so there's Earth, and let's plot for return. We seem to have 718 meters per second, which sounds good, but we're in this weird orbit. Ah, oh, heck, well. I guess we'll test the heat shield and such. We know this pod is messed up in many different ways. Um, 
many, many different ways. Actually, I turned off the reaction wheels. I forgot about that. Well, we might need them on. Or I could just try and use the hydrazine on this pod. If it'd work. Is it using it? Maybe I have to activate it like uh, with this. Mm. Nope, it's not using the hydrazine at all. I think, well, okay. <laughs> so many problems. All right, uh, we'll have to allow the reaction wheel if we're going to do this, I guess then. How the heck was it uh, actually turning and holding steady? That does the this have a reaction wheel? No. Hmm. I had turned off the reaction wheel torque and somehow was able to hold steady. Curious. Okay, node. You can see our, the odd location we're doing this node because of our odd orbit. And ignition. A distinctly different plume than the exact same engine on the ascent module for the ILV. Because I used a different plume, plume by choice. This looks like the Hydrolox plume instead, instead of a hypergolic plume. A little bit late. We don't have RCS, so... Uh, fortunately, I think we have infinite ignitions on this. Right? Infinite? Right? Okay, well, 500, that's good enough. Okay, we've got periapsis. Okay, maybe that's a little bit too... Oh, that's too far. Shoot. Alright, well, I guess I'll try and bring it in. Shoot. Even though I don't consider a particularly valid test in this case. Alright, well, that'll be a serious test of the seat shield. It might kill them. We'll see. Alright, on... On to Earth. Did the uh, moon disappear? No, moon's still there. Well, we're gonna have to put up with the annoying thrusters firing all over the place. And the fact that the reaction wheel is what's doing the stuff. We do have hydrazine, we could be using that, so... Okay, double check that we have enough in the pod for stuff. Yeah, we've got plenty of water and everything. Alright, so normal. We'll wait a little bit longer before letting go of the service module. Okay, we're in the dark anyway, so the service module electric charge isn't helping. And that is the service module there, so off it goes. Now surface negative. We've still got the reaction wheel. And we'll go roll zero as well. And descent mode doesn't appear to be a thing. Okay, there is no descent mode. They're going to have to do it the hard way. Okay, here we go. I don't think it's going to be safe to release the arrow cap when it's down in there. So we're just not. We'll just uh, go with the parachute directly when the time comes. We'll arm it. I don't know if it's set to anything good, but let's just, uh, well, that seems reasonable. It doesn't really have an arm. Well, okay, that's armed. We are slowing down and we've got flame effects. Ablator is definitely ablating. Lots of g-forces though. Well, actually, not that much, considering we're coming back from the moon. It's not too bad. Yes, well, um, while I have a few things to fix, and this seems to work out fairly well despite the lack of descent mode.
fairly consistent g-force on deceleration here. And it is going down. Let me check g-forces. 6.3. Now let's see about the parachutes. We're actually technically heavier than we ought to be because it didn't use the hydrazine, the fuel. They might also dump wastewater and stuff like that, of course. Okay, we have parachute pre-deployment, or I don't know what it did. It's in yellow, but it's, there's something out there, so okay. Okay, full parachute deployment. Whoa! Oh! Did not happen in time. That might have been because of my physical time warp. It might be a problem with the parachutes. Hmm. Yeah, so they, they might have a bit of a problem there. I'll have to review that. Might just go with real shoots instead of the parachutes that it comes with. We'll see. So, well... <laughs> Just my luck, right? Anyway, but otherwise, phenomenally successful, except for the last little bit. And yeah, it looks like SLS. Really tight margins, though. Uh, we could put Orion and the lander at the same time and use one of the proposed landers. So anyway, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.